Hi everybody and welcome to this week's webinar from Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland. And this week's webinar topic is tips for doing a facial in a post-COVID setting. And we're joined today by Sharon Noonan, who is the support and training from Eminence Organic Skincare. And then she also runs her own sal salon, Saffron Rouge in Longford. And she is a trainer as well in Galligan's, am I correct there? Beauty School? That's right, College yeah. In Dublin, yeah. So welcome, Sharon. Thank and you. thank you for joining us. Thank you for having and, me. Uh, yeah, and I guess, yeah, we picked uh, the topic as you and I were discussing there earlier on uh, before we went live, Sharon. We picked the topic because, I suppose, for the last few weeks, um, I've talked to people about doing facials and stuff, but I feel like we haven't chatted in a while to anyone around the you know bringing the COVID back into it again because everybody was settling in you know getting back to business um but I suppose you know the reality is that we're now living in um I, it's not even correct to say a post-COVID workplace because it's, mm -hmm. we're in the COVID workplace now yeah. and everything has changed so I guess you know I thought it would be a good idea to chat to, uh, to you Sharon around the beauty end of things because um you're in that good position as well where you're both a trainer and you're running your own salon so you're like literally the person on the ground so um i suppose yeah we'll just start with um i wanted to ask you what do you think uh, are the main differences between giving a facial now and giving a facial pre-covid um maybe if you want to talk me through you know what you think are the the real standout differences well, I suppose, um, you know, having a beauty therapy background and have done a number of facials um, over sort of pre-COVID, um, we, we'd be very hands-on uh, with our treatments. You know, we would have physical contact with the um, client. And, um, you know, so... I suppose that physical contact is kind of not there anymore, obviously. Um, we would have to now wear gloves during our facials. Now, we've got some really good positive feedback, you know, from that you, they don't feel any change or difference. But as therapists also, we have, a, we'd hear a lot that we have nice healing hands. So I'm kind of very cautious that we are, we know we're not giving them that sort of energy into um, the facial. However, um, our techniques are completely the same with using gloves um, than, you know, beforehand. So there's, there's that thing. Um, you know, I suppose having that sort of, you know, um, that contact with a client, we're very near them. Um, you know, we're, we're really close to the uh, mucosal sites, which is the eyes, the nose and the mouth. And we have to be very cautious of that. So, um, you know, we would be wearing our masks. We would have full PPE, our gloves, our visors uh, before doing a treatment. So I suppose in order to take that fear away, um, you know, for a client coming in is to kind of alliterate that, you know, we are doing everything we can to keep them safe, but also keep ourselves safe before having a facial. So there's not real huge changes, only that we don't have that hand contact on a, on a client. We'd use our gloves instead. Okay. And yeah, I suppose there when you were saying about like you've got your full PPE on, um, but like the client can't because they're having a facial. Because um, you know the way we were saying earlier on about like with hairdressers, you know, when you go into the hairdressers now, you have to wear a mask, but it's different if you're going to have a facial, they have to have their face completely yeah. bare. I know some beauty um, companies also have a screen in front of their beds as well, which is a brilliant idea, actually. Um, so it means, again, like, you know, it's nearly like a visor, but it's actually across the bed. It's, yeah. uh, it's pretty, it's like a screen. It's a really good idea. Um, so, yeah, again, keeps you protected and them protected. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, obviously, there are a lot of changes um, to the facial, but um, we'd like to think that the, you know, customer is still getting the same experience, 
you know, even though we're wearing our gloves. So we've got some really good feedback from that. So um, okay. they're still getting the good experience from, from us, the therapist. And um, then, you know, a lot, uh, obviously a lot of the changes are around uh, the extra health and safety precautions. And do you think um, yourself now, especially that you're like you're in your own salon and you're doing training as well, do you think that the initial, like I was calling them teething problems, um, have been overcome now and both therapists and clients have adapted? Um, like when I say teething problems, I suppose I mean... Changes? Know, the initial, yeah, the initial like just complete, you know, we've all just been thrown into this, this different universe <laughs> um, yeah. but do you think like the the you know because at the start obviously it was really like kind of very shocking you know a change do you think that's like we're all getting a little bit past that now the clients and the therapists themselves and people are just yeah. getting on with it yeah I think so I mean obviously like this is all very new to us um we we didn't know what to expect actually you know going into the salon environment initially the first week or two we were we didn't know how to kind of react with one another you know when a client would come in we're like oh what what, what am i going to do like yeah. what do i do but i think now um you know it's flowing a little bit better so you know when a client comes in you know we show them to the the sanitization station most of us have that all set up now uh, but sorry, just before we um, actually greet our, our customers, you know, we're wearing our full PPE, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we're meeting and greeting um, the client. She sanitizes or washes her hands before she sanitizes, comes into the uh, treatment environment. And then we have like um, in some places in, in my own salon here and also in the Wicklow Street Clinic um, there in Dublin, Mm -hmm. um, we'd have fogging machines. So we fog down the whole um, area. So that's all completely sanitized, which is something actually we wouldn't have done before COVID. So I think it's a really good thing. COVID has kind of um, been a, a positive thing in one way because we yeah. really stepped it up with our hygiene. We did anyway, but this yeah. is on another level, which is very important because there's many different viruses going around there that we don't know about, but this is just yeah. one very very um which is happening right now so you know they're meeting they're greeted with all full full ppe um you know they um have to fill out a form to make sure that they have no uh, covid symptoms um and then they are uh, greeted then by their therapist brought to the room and away the treatment goes so yeah um those teething at the beginning it was very very hard but now i think it's flowing really really well um you know there was a time when you'd you'd never leave the house i suppose you know without your keys your phone and your wallet and now you can add on your hand sanitizer and yeah. uh, your mask to yeah. that so yeah. those, it's 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 an it's the new i hate saying it the new normal for now yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's flowing much, much easier now. And I think, you know, once you reassure your customer that these are the things that you have set in place, um, I know my own customers and in the Wicklow Street um, Clinic too, that, um, and in Galligan's, it's, it's, um, it's, it's flowed very well. And, um, you know, it's, it's just the way of life now. And have you found, um, you know, in terms of like appointment times that like everybody's got into the flow of that now as well? Like, you know, the way, yeah. like before you could sort of like, you know, a client could arrive early and, you know, flick through magazines, whereas like that's a big no-no now. You know, they have to, everything has to be quite stringent. But do you think that everybody is, is really into that now and they understand and that there's no issues there anymore? Yeah, like with with some of my um, my own appointments, um, I leave a little bit of space in between so that I get the room ready. Um, I just have a one uh, room treatment suite here in Longford and um, in Saffron Route. 
and um, you know the, the reception area is not there anymore. So I have it where my clients come in, I get it all sanitized and ready for the next client to come in. So th we're not meeting, um, they're not meeting anybody along the way. Um, okay. And I think that's the safest way. Um, probably do not take in as many clients as well. That's the other thing. Um, so I know each shop has a different way of um, managing their clients. You know, some people will have more than one therapist in their in their you know their working environment. So yes, I, you're allocated obviously that client and you you keep her as safe as possible from the time she comes in to the time she's leaving so yeah. you know there's a lot more client care i guess yeah and then i suppose you you sort of touched on there briefly a while ago um you know if therapists are still encountering nervous clients what's the best way to relax them so that like you know uh, uh, going for a facial was always something that was, you know, synonymous with relaxation. So, you know, what is it that you can do as a therapist to make sure that that treatment is still what it always was, even though the client, you know, is nervous or stressed or just afraid, you know? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Um, I suppose it's to, like, because I've had this on the phone, like, what have you, like, is it safe to go in, um, even if it's for an eyebrow shape? Um, so I tell them what I have put in place, like my, my sanitization station, I'm in full PPE, um, you know, um, my room is completely sterilized, um, my bed, everything, my lamps, everything. And I actually, if, they're, if it's in for full facial, I maybe just say, look at, why don't you have an express facial, have a 30 minute facial, see how you get on with that. Um, or just come in and have a look at the place first. You know, come in and make sure that you're comfortable first if there's any anxieties there. Uh, come in and see my setup. Um, and then hopefully that will get you over the fear element of coming in and having a treatment. If it's a facial, maybe try them with an express facial first, see how they get on with that, and then maybe encourage in four to six weeks a full facial. So that could be um, one way of helping with that. Um, but I think it's, it's to kind of reassure them that you have those procedures in place and that there really isn't anything to be worried about. Okay. And just on a sort of a side note there, when you, you just mentioned, you know, that like you would be reassuring the client that you're in full PPE. Have you found, you know, yourself personally as a therapist that you have to get used to being in full PPE? Like I'm just going from my own experience of like, you know, the way we all have to wear a mask now going in and out, going into shops. And, you know, I find myself that like, if someone starts having a conversation with me, my impulse is to take my mask off, to talk to the person. Like, mm -hmm. have you found that, as, you know, in the workplace, obviously you have to be completely protected at all times. Has that been like a bit challenge. of taking, a bit of getting used to, a bit of a challenge? Yeah. Yeah, it has. It's not easy. Um, like before COVID, uh, we would have wore some PPE for our aesthetic treatments, for example. Yeah. You know, we would have wore gloves, um, a mask, and we would have had a hairnet on maybe and um, an apron. Yeah. Whereas now in treatments, you know, we're wearing... Um, you know the mask and the, the the visor so that is that's really hard and actually you know if you're in small rooms then it's even harder again mm -hmm. um so yeah it is it, it is very challenging um, especially if you have to wear it all day so i think it's it's kind of good in one way is not to try and not have your customers one after the other try and space them out so you're giving yourself yeah that little bit of um, a break with them. You know, um, if you have to leave the room, then leave the room, yeah. you know, get that breather, but don't do it clearly in the room, you know, uh, but yeah, it's very, very challenging for the therapist out there at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's a, it, it is tough, but you will actually get used to it as well. Yeah. 
it's like I, what is it that they say that like a, a habit takes six weeks to break or something yeah so it's a bit like a habit that will you know we'll all get used to eventually yeah <laughs> but I, I think there's just the tip there for the, the therapist would be just to take a little time out, take some, take some deep breaths because it is very, very hard and then go back into the treatment environment again. Yeah. Um, but leave a little bit of time if you can, of course, do that, you know, um, and that will help throughout the day. And do you think um, then just back to the whole issue of, of facials themselves, um, do you think clients are looking for different sorts of facials these days compared to pre-COVID? Is there, have you noticed uh, any shift in trends? Yeah, I, I suppose, um, again, if people are sort of fearful, they're like, is there anything else I can have, a, a, you know, instead of a facial? And you'd be like, well, actually, there are. There are like your skin peels that you can do if you want to have those done and you're still getting a really great treatment. And then you're in the... Uh, salon or clinic for less time so but you're still so yes definitely um skin peels would be one um microdermabrasion would be another treatment that i would see more express facials as well um yeah. that you could have so yeah there is, there has been a few and actually retail has been is is on the increase as well because we can still give them a really good salon experience without the therapist hands on um however they're using really really good skincare lines at home so okay. the, so the retail would be much much uh would have increased over and over um lockdown. are people presenting with um skin complaints like from masks and things yes um they're starting to get more congestion which is this new mask need yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um it's actually real <laughs> yeah it's not something somebody made up you know <laughs> no no it, it's real it's there it's happening i actually got a few breakouts myself um and i was like no this can't be happening yeah um, yeah uh because i would have i'd be on a really good strict sort of uh skincare regime um so yeah um yeah there's a, a more people getting break out now because the skin can't breathe inside the masks. So um, there's a number of things you can do for that is to, um, you know, try and use something with glycolic acid in it or um, salicylic if you've got the real breakout in the skin yeah. where you have whiteheads. So um, there are treatments that you can do at home if you didn't want to go into a salon environment. And uh, so ask any um of your you know any beauty salon or clinic that actually provides those services um you know and also if the breakout is very very bad there's things that you can take like zinc picolinate yeah. which is amazing for breakout and infection and things like that blemishes yeah um, it's it's absolutely brilliant for just um, killing off infection and preventing scarring as well you want to try and yeah. prevent that in some cases i've seen a huge amount of cases where it's now forming into an acne so yeah you have so, to get it early get it early is key there yeah there's loads of loads of advice out there for um people who are going through that experience yeah and uh somebody uh emailed or sent in a message uh, somebody that's watching uh called elaine Marrett. i might be mispronouncing her name now and she just wanted to ask you the question she said a lot of clients are allergic to gloves are there particular gloves you were using? Um, it's probably latex, is it? I don't know. She just said a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of people. You can get the latex-free gloves. Um, it's okay. a lot. Of, there's a lot of people allergic to latex, so try and go for the latex-free. Um, so that would be the advice there. Um, you know, there's there's loads of different ones out there. A lot of people have uh, allergic reactions. Or another thing is to put the cotton gloves inside, because a lot of people sweat inside those gloves. Yeah. Um, so maybe put on the cotton gloves in inside those um, disposable gloves. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it just stops the sweating. You can get powdered ones as well, but they're quite annoying as well. They can leave you. They're quite messy. Messy. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Latex free. He's possibly allergic reaction to latex. Okay. And um, so, yeah, sorry, just, I just got distracted there when I saw the question coming in. Um, are there any new things that a therapist can do as part of a facial now to maybe make up for anything that they can't do because of restrictions? Um, so I suppose, it's, it, again, it's going back to that notion that, like, you know, look for the positives in COVID, if there are any. You know, it's like, what can we do now that we didn't do before? Or that, that you can't do now, say, that you can do something else instead? Is there anything else you can bring to the experience? During the treatment, is it? During yeah. The treatment, yeah. I suppose massage is the biggest thing. Um, again, you know, we know it's very hands-on and you have that physical contact with the skin. So, I mean, there's loads of great um, things that you could do, like get the massage machines instead um you know during that part of the facial um maybe introduce um the led machine as well um so that would add that little bit of extra um experience for the client and actually treat the skin um or another thing you could do is maybe recommend a different type of treatment like a peel or something like that um just a different type of treatment you're still going to get the whole um skin treated um the best way um you know than than the massage element of it even though massage is very important um but yeah they would be the thing so just get a massage machine for the skin instead of using your hands um you could use an led machine or recommend another aesthetic treatment like peels Okay. And then um, I suppose I just wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, keeping your clients coming back. But I wanted to ask you before I asked you that, um, you know, when you reopened, like, you know, in a salon, like I was talking to somebody, I think it was last week, and we were saying, you know, that like the, the main thing that people were rushing back to the beauty salon for at the very beginning was the eyebrows. Um, did you did you find you know um, just in your own experience like were facials something that took a little bit longer for people to come back or did was was you know did did you realise that facials were up there and they were every bit as essential as getting the eyebrows done? Yeah, I mean, I in Ballymahan here, um, I would be known for my facials. Um, I'm more a more a skin clinic, um, yeah. and I now I do a lot of eyebrows as well. I mean, that's where I started my business from, I suppose, um, until I built up my clientele. Yeah. Um, but um, it wasn't just eyebrows; it was about people. I had started people on peels, for example, uh, on courses of peels just before lockdown. So I had a lot of contact with my clients during lockdown as well. We were doing consultations over the, um, over Zoom. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, uh, they, they could order their product off product. me. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I suppose I was still looking after them that way. Um, so yeah, they couldn't wait to come in and actually have then their full strength peel you know, to start the whole treatment process. But we got through it. I have to say, I was very happy with how the skincare actually fixed the skin without them coming in for a peel. I was actually astonished. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so, yeah, but then just to enhance the, the treatment, then the peel was what they had to do. But no, they couldn't wait to come in and even have their peel okay. or their facials. So then just in terms, I suppose, of, you know, keeping clients coming back all the time um, across the board, you know, because I, you know, at the start, it's been kind of a, a team across hair and beauty, really, you know, when the reopening happened on the 29th of June or whenever people chose to reopen, there was always going to be that initial absolute, like, you know, rush of, you know, customers and, you know, salons were getting rid of their appointment backlog and all of that. So, you know, I think that's settled down quite a bit now. And just in terms of, you know, for the next while now going forward, you know, would you have tips and suggestions um, for therapists and salons, um, you know, to help them, you know, make sure that their clients are 
continuing to be loyal, continuing to come back, you know, that the momentum is, is maintained. Yeah, um, I think, I think it's always nice to build a relationship with your clients. I think that's, that's one of the most important things. Like remember things that they have said to you, if you can at all. Um, because then that, that means that you really are listening. Sometimes we are like um, counselors in our job. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a great to kind of build up a relationship. And I think if you do that, then you'll hold on to a client. Uh, one big, big tip um, would be, I would always treat my clients like I'd like to be treated myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, giving them that extra little bit of advice or, you know, personal attention is really, really important. So always treat your client like you'd want to be treated yourself in a salon environment. I think that's really, really important. Um, then I hear what I do hear a lot. And it's like, I think it's from my training side as well. And I try and get this across a lot is um, you have to listen to what your client wants. That's so important. Um, always listen to what sh her needs are. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we've a tendency to say, oh, well, look at, yeah, your skin is like, you know, you've got that breakout there, but that's not what their concerns are at all. Or, you know, it might be something completely different. So always listen to what your client is saying and, you know, give her what she wants. Um, if you can at all, you know, help her. If you can't, then refer her to another therapist that could possibly help her in your clinic or refer her on. She'd appreciate that, you know, that you didn't just try to, you know, recommend a different type of treatment just to, to fob off yeah. what she, you know. So I think um, always listen. That's a big thing. I always find that that's when I get new clients in here, they've had treatments elsewhere and they weren't listened to. So I think if you listen to your client, you will keep them, you know, so even if you've referred them on, they'll always come back. They'll always remember you, you know. Um, so those sort of few things, you know, if it's about a skin consultation, communication is so important. You know, um, if they had a skincare line, you haven't seen them in a while. Um, what I would do is always chase it up. If you have a free period, just chase it up with a call. Just say, how you doing, Mrs. Jones? Um, you took on some skincare there about eight weeks ago. Just want to know how you're getting on with them. You know, so, you know, giving them that little bit of personal detail. There's not many people doing that, but always kind of chase it up with a phone call if you have a free period. Okay. Okay. And then this this particular time of year um, as we're changing seasons does that do anything for you know the business end of things you know is it is it a good time to you know maybe get new clients is it a good time to you know take advantage of the weather or you know any any tips around that but just the time of year where our skin is changing yeah yeah i mean we're going from we had lovely weather actually during lockdown we were so lucky yeah you know, and that's what I found, like coming back, people had really damaged their skin quite badly. So skin peels were, were very much needed, you know, to treat the skin. Um, so, um, you know, we have, we do an anti-redness treatment or whatever. So yeah, like the skin, when it's changing, if you notice a different change, it's very important um, that, you know, you would try and get in for a consultation and uh, get the skin sorted. So step it up with, um, you know, more serums and, and masks. They are your treatment side of your, you know, whether you're retailing it or whether you're adding it in um, during a facial. So um, yes, um, if you do see changes, even if you're doing an eyebrow shape and see a change to a client's skin, maybe tell them, you know, that yeah. this is what you can do to, you know, help them, you know, um, because it might be something that they've wanted to talk to you about for a while and they didn't get the chance to. So, yeah. you know, I've pointed out things many of the time on my client's skin and they've been very happy with me giving that, you know, advice to, to them, 
you know? Yeah. And then that's, that's your chance to retail or it's your chance to, you know, um, to offer a treatment. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Listen, that was all, um, really interesting and helpful. And okay. thank you very much for joining us. And for anybody that joined a little bit late, we were talking to Sharon Noonan, who is with, uh, sales support and training with Eminence Organic Skincare, and she also has her own salon in Longford. Is it Ballymahan? Ballymahan, yes. Ballymahan in Longford. Besides and Centre Park. <laughs> yeah, besides Centre Park. Yeah, we were saying that a while ago. Three miles from Centre Park. Yeah. And uh, she also does training with Galligans in Dublin. So, um, And we just talked there about... Uh, the differences between doing facials before COVID and doing facials now. So thank you so much for all that information and thank you everybody for tuning in. And we won't be back next week because we have Professional Beauty World so you can log into all the different things that are happening there. But um, Professional Beauty Ireland will be back again with webinar then the following week. So thank you again, Sharon. Thank you and very much. Okay, bye. Bye, good luck everybody. Thank you.